Je, François Legault, déclare solennellement que je serai fidèle et porterai vraie allégeance à Sa Majesté le Roi Charles III. My undertaking is not to take an oath towards the King of England. That's what I will do. It's just as plain and simple as that. But it's actually not so simple. Not swearing allegiance to the crown means defying Canada's 1867 constitution. And according to the rules, a person cannot take their seat in the National Assembly unless they do it. So this has become a political dilemma in Quebec. And for now, it seems the parties are at an impasse. Joining us now with more on this, the person you just saw there, PQ leader Paul Saint-Pierre Plamondon. Thank you for joining us today. Good evening. So you appeal to the other parties, and Quebec Solidaire is on your side on this issue, not pledging allegiance to the king at their swearing-in ceremony today, but it's still unclear what exactly happens next, or if technically you can even be called an MA if you haven't taken the full oath. So first off, are you prepared to give up sitting in the legislature to keep fighting this battle? Well, there are many possibilities uh, before us, and it's indeed not clear at this point. Uh, what is clear is my undertaking not to take that oath for personal reasons and for honesty, for integrity reasons. Uh, once that is said, um, we have many uh, professors of law from different universities who say that in the reality, if the National Assembly decides that one of the two oaths is sufficient to be sitting in the uh, Salon Bleu, then the law will change through the new practice. And uh, there's potentially no consequence at all. At least the Constitution doesn't uh, foresee any specific consequence. So there is a gray zone, uh, but uh, there is also a, a genuine debate that is uh, beyond uh, partisan interest, beyond uh, traditional uh, differences we have in our po point of views. I, I think Quebecers in general agree that we shouldn't be taking an oath to the King of England, who is also the Pope of the Anglican Church. Uh, so all those reasons are uh, very well understood, I think, by uh, the population. So there, there may be a, a consensus among a majority of the population. Perhaps a, a recent uh, Léger served survey showed that that a lot of people say, you know, we should do away with this. But I think the question now is more uh, the process. And you, and you talked about this, the Constitution. You wrote a letter to the Secretary General of the National Assembly. He responded to you, and he was very clear. He referred to Article 128 in the 1867 Constitution. And essentially, he said he has to apply the rules that are currently in place. And he alone doesn't have the power to exempt m &As from the rules. And he can't independently modify a constitutional text. So what do you say to that? Well, he's correct. And he also says an act of the National Assembly, an, an intention that is clear from the elected members of the Assembly, could change the state of law. So basically, he says, I'm not the elected member, but if the elected members of Parliament believe that whether or not you take the oath to the king, you should be allowed to do your work and be sitting in the Salon Bleu, well, I will follow that uh, evolution, evolution of uh, the interpretation we have of the uh, Constitution. So there, then again, there's space for evolution, there's space for finding solutions, uh, and it's very clear from that letter. But for now, I mean, there is a lack of, of clarity, a gray zone, as you said earlier. The new parliamentary session starts November 29th. I mean, what do you think will happen between now and then that would allow you to sit in the legislature? Because the CAQ says it can't be resolved with, with a motion. It will take a bill to remove that part of the oath. And, to, and obviously, to table a bill, you have to be a sitting member of the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. So, there, you know, it's a vicious cycle here. Yeah. So the, they are being contradicted by several professors of law. And we have many weeks uh, in front of us to uh, negotiate, to find a solution. And I'm confident that at the end, the fact that we have a very large consensus in the population and the fact that the majority of uh, specialists in uh, the constitutional law that, that agree, that say that there should be a solution without trying to modify the constitution, all those factors tell me that we're going to find a solution and that we're, we'll all be sitting uh, in the Salon Bleu on the 29th of the, uh, November.
So you believe that you'll be able to take your seat on the 29th of November. There's no other possibility for you. Oh, there are many possibilities, but the most probable one is that we'll find a solution. Okay, so you're confident. You think there, there's still time. There's five weeks and uh, many actors that are yet to speak and uh, very vast support in the population. So we've been talking about it much more than I expected, to be honest. Absolutely. So, so once, once we said everything we could on that topic, can we please solve the issue and uh, go further, do well, something else afterwards? And, and that's something that I wanted to bring up because there's actually been criticism, of course, that this discussion is just taking up too much space and that there are other priorities to deal with. Any number of issues. Oh, yeah. You know, the healthcare system, Obviously. overflowing emergency rooms, uh, you know, the labor shortage, inflation. But as soon as you were elected, you brought the oath issue to the forefront. Why is this your number one fight? Because it's my number one uh, thing in my agenda. It's the first step I need to take, and my uh, promise was very clear. And it's also the fact that the CEQ doesn't believe it's urgent to be sitting. So they put the date to go back to work on the 29th of November, and that should be the topic. If we have so many issues to deal with, and if we've debated in all possible ways during the campaign, why are we not working? Why are we not sitting? Why is the CEQ not very uh, motivated to go to work and uh, um, work on, uh, forward, uh, move forward on, on all those topics? So the fact that I have uh, this uh, will not to take an oath has nothing to do with the fact that the CEQ is not mo moving forward any of those topics. And of course, I'm available and willing to work on anything that we can uh, improve on all the topics you just uh, mentioned. Okay, before we wrap up, just more generally speaking, moving away from the oath, you know, you ran in a riding where it was far from sure you'd win your seat, but you pulled it off on election night and the PQ has three seats and not just one, as some people had predicted. But, I mean, it's still only three seats out of 125, so it's far from the PQ's glory days. What, what do you see for the future of your party? Well, you have Quebec Solidaire at 15%, the PQ at 15%, and the Conservative at 13%. And because of the, uh, the system we're in and that the CQ doesn't want to change, we are down to three uh, MP, but we have vast support throughout Quebec, and we, uh, according to 40%, uh, uh, almost 40% of the population, we ran the best campaign, and we are the second choice, uh, the most uh, uh, popular second choice for all those who didn't vote PQ. So there's growth, there's space for growth, space for building, and uh, that's what we're going to do until uh, 2026, and we can be very useful on uh, many topics and we'll, we'll be very constructive and as uh, rigorous and relevant as we can over the next uh, four years. All right, Monsieur Paul Saint-Pierre Plamondon, we will be watching closely, of course, on Friday when you're set to be sworn in. Thank you very much for joining us today. À suivre. À suivre, en effet. <laughs>